In this video, we're going to see how to open CSV files in Microsoft Excel. CSV is a very popular format for storing data sets, and Microsoft Excel is one of the most popular spreadsheet applications. So this video will show us how to bring these two together. If you're not really familiar with CSV files, even though you're watching this video, probably because you've encountered them, I'll explain them in more detail when we actually open one in a few moments. So the first step will be to open up a CSV file. So let's uh, suppose you have a file. Here's one, for instance, well, pipeline accidents. We're not going to talk about the nature of the file in detail, but more the, its structure as a CSV file. So if you try to open the file, suppose you try to open it up in Microsoft Excel, as my interface asks for here. So here it opens it up. Now, depending on your particular operating system and your language version of Excel, you might see what looks like a normal data set, or you might see something messy like what I have here. Uh, the reason why mine is messy is actually that my operating system uh, settings are in French settings right now, and this CSV file was set up for uh, American English settings, and so that's incompatibility. One of the main things this video will show is how to clean things up. Now, your version might look just fine, as it will in the end when we finish looking at this, and then you're perfectly okay. But if you have a little bit of a mess like this, let me first try to explain to you what's going on. So if we go back to open the file, well, instead of opening it with Microsoft Excel, let's open it with a plain text editor. Uh, you can use Notepad on Windows or text edit on, um, on Mac, but then make sure it's a text edit with plain text, not formatted text. But if you open it up, the plain text editor, then you will see a CSV file in its native format. It'll be something like this. So I'm going to make this bigger. So what you have, if you try to get the structure, CSV stands for comma separated values. It means that in the data set, each value or each column is separated by a comma. So the comma sign here. So what this is saying is that the first amount of text until you come to the first comma is one column of data, and this is report number. So for every line underneath, the first value there before you get to the comma corresponds to the report number. The next accident here, that means the next value in each line corresponds to an accident here until you get to a comma. And then next operator name, then comma, and the next value the third is operator name. And notably, the length of each column might vary. Sometimes they're the same as report number and year, but with accident, uh, with operator name, they vary, and with many of the various values, they vary. Some values are actually blank. There's nothing between the commas, and, and so on. So this is a particular way of storing a data set. And the reason comma separated value CSV is so popular is that virtually every data analytics software understands it and can read in the data and can work with it. It's the most generic format to transmit data. Um, however, sometimes it's a little bit uh, tricky to read in, uh, as we see here in my Excel sheet. And so no worries, what we just have to do is to tell Excel exactly what it's looking at so that it can properly read in uh, this comma separated values file. And that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so um, the instructions that we're about to follow are actually on the slides that accompany this video. So in the slides, we have these instructions. Uh, the first being to open the CSV file with Excel. So we've already opened the file in Excel, and we saw this messy kind of format. 
So the instructions here, we just need to follow a step by step. And I'll show them to you and then come back to the slides. So the first thing is you have to realize that what Excel read in looks like it put everything on all the sheets. But if you actually click on A1, you see that all the data is in column A. And if you actually click on column B, you see it's empty. So what Excel actually did is that it stuffed everything into the first column and didn't put anything as a subsequent columns. So we're going to tell Excel to go back and take all the values that put in column A and put it in the appropriate columns. To do that, you first select column A by clicking on the A, so that selects the entire column. Then in Excel, you go to the data uh, tab in the ribbon, and then you look for this option, text to columns. And that will take this text and put it in its appropriate columns. So we click on that. So what I just did is on the slides, step one, you left click on column A header, just like the entire column. Step two, you click on the data tab. Step three, text to columns. Now note that what you, uh, if you have a different language version of Excel, the wording obviously would be in another language, but the pictures and the positions are the same. So try to follow that way. So in the convert text to columns wizards, the first step, you leave it as default delimited. Delimited means that there is a delimiter, that is there's some sort of character or indicator of when one column begins and when another starts. That's what a comma does. It delimits one column from another. We're not doing fixed width where each column is exactly the same width of text. So we then click next. Again, in the slides, you see that, what we just have there. Then here it asks what delimiter? We don't have a tab. We're using a comma as a delimiter. That's actually the problem. Excel was expecting a tab, but that's not what delimits. We're using commas to delimit. And once we click there, you can see Excel is able to right away tell where each column begins. And that's uh, the primary issue. However, especially if you your problem is because you're on a different language uh, operating system, that's not uh, the full concern, and we need to click Next. So again, this is all on the slides. Delimiter, Next, and then select Comma, and then click on Next. Go to the next step. So in this next, in this step three, we need to click on the advanced tab to deal with the number formats. So in my operating systems, the decimal separator is a comma. Uh, however, in Excel, uh, it, I'm sorry, in this particular data set that we're reading, and you have to know what it is, it is uses a period because it's an American data set. And you also need to check the thousands separator. Uh, sometimes it might be a dot or something, but you just need to leave it blank, so a space character or blank, and so that is appropriate. It's mainly the decimal separator I have to change here. And then you click OK. And then you can click Finish. So again, on the slides, those instructions are there. You click 1, you click Advanced. 2, make sure you have the decimal point and the space in the appropriate places. 4, you press OK for the Advanced Text Import settings. And 5, you click Finish. And once you finish, you can now see that Excel recognizes the columns appropriately. So if your operating system in Excel were in American English or something compatible, you should have seen this from the beginning. But here you might have need you might need to have gone through these steps. And now you have a data set that is correctly formatted, and you can use it as anything else using Excel. There's one more thing though. You would think that after this formatting, you probably want to save your data set uh, or you want to save it as, but actually this is problematic because you generally do not want to save a CSV file directly from Excel. Uh, Excel often adds its own format and the result might not be what you expect. Usually if you're working with Excel, you'd want to convert it using save as to a Microsoft Excel file. 
so you can browse and then can then go and then can save it as um here this is it's data set or whatever you want to call it and save as type go to making an excel workbook and then you save it and now you have an excel file with all the data that you originally had that's usually what you want to do